from the Hussman School of Journalism and Media at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, covering the full range of Tar Heel athletics. This is Sports Extra. BJ, I got a question for you. Can the Carolina football team keep the undefeated streak going after this weekend? Bella, I sure hope so. I'm really looking forward to seeing a 4-0 record after this weekend. Mm -hmm, and I sure hope so. Good morning and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm Isabella Gescos. And I'm BJ Tillman. Thanks for joining us. Coming off a commanding win against Minnesota in the first ever matchup of the two teams last weekend, the 17th ranked UNC football team hopes to keep its streak alive against Pittsburgh tomorrow. The Tar Heels are off to a 3-0 start for the second straight year. UNC's offense will look to standout players like junior wide receiver Nate McCollum, who earned ACC Wide Receiver of the Week with his 15 receptions for 165 yards. And as long as the defense plays cleanly, the Heels should have the ability to improve to 4-0 for the first time since 97. Kickoff is set for 8 p.m. at Pittsburgh. Now we know UNC just had a great run in ACC play and won the division and is expected to battle out for a championship, championship spot again. Here's football analyst Rachel Kivlin for Routes with Rachel. Rachel? BJ, Carolina is a six-point favorite. Why? UNC is now one of the only teams that has several non-conference Power 5 wins on its resume, and Pitt is coming in with a losing record. Plus, the improvement on the Heels' defensive front speaks for itself. Kamari Gaynor and Cayman Rucker already have multiple sacks each, part of a UNC defense that has 10 in only three games, compared to a defense that collected only 17 all of last year. Now, you might say, Rachel, on paper this looks like a lock, but I cannot stress enough the importance of not being complacent or comfortable with the pit defense that's currently ranked number one in the ACC. So what do we need to do to win this game? Pitt ranks first in total yards allowed. Let's take a look at some of their defense from last year's matchup. You're going to see the Pitt defense here is going to literally part the Red Sea, and this middle linebacker is going to come through the center and is going to have the ability to just take down Elijah Hood. He's going to try to evade that sidestep um, tackle, but ultimately they're just going to swarm in and absolutely take him down. And it's not just strength that their defense possesses, it's speed. I mean, we know Antoine Green is made of speed, but watch here as the cornerback is going to accelerate right alongside of him, and he's going to be able to tip that ball perfectly, no penalties on the books. I mean, it's textbook. What does this mean? Our offensive line needs to be on point and keep Drake May protected at all costs because they're going to try infiltrating the backfield, and we need to recognize the strike before it happens. After last year's game, Mac Brown said it was their toughest and most physical game that they've played there in years. And if we know one thing for sure, it's bound to be a good one. BJ? Rachel, is there anyone specific we should be looking out for during the game that could bring Carolina the dub? Well, I mean, obviously an easy answer would be to say May, but I think guys like Corey Gaynor are going to be instrumental in leading the O-line to stay guarded against this talented defense. Thanks, Rachel. I know I'll be glued to the TV tomorrow night. Last night, the number one ranked women's soccer team took on number 22 Virginia in Charlottesville, looking to remain undefeated. A defensive first half kept the score 0-0, both teams having a chance to score, but neither found the back of the net. Ali Sentinor broke the tie, kicking an absolute missile inside the far post to put UNC up one. Her goal was all the Tar Heels needed to get the victory, slamming the door shut on UVA for a 1-0 win. The UNC men's soccer team stays in Chapel Hill tomorrow for a home bout against number 11, Duke. The Tar Heels look to, to keep a good thing going against their ACC rivals, coming off a strong 3-0 win against UNCW on Tuesday. UNC will look for another strong performance from grad transfer Martin Vician, whose two goals helped extend the longest undefeated start for the program in eight years. The Blue Devils are coming off a surprise loss against unranked Clemson, 2-0. The game is set for 7 p.m. After a strong showing last weekend, the defending national champion UNC women's tennis team is back in action again. Freshman Thea Rabman and senior Riley Tran will be representing Carolina in both the singles and doubles division at the Milwaukee Tennis Classic. They start competition today, and the tournament will run through Sunday. Four more Tar Heels will be competing this weekend in Cary at the fall-ranked Spotlight. 
Sophomore Reese Brantmeyer is teaming up with junior Carson Tangelig and fifth year Annika Yarlagata will be playing alongside grad transfer Abby Forbes in the doubles portion that started yesterday. All four will be competing in the singles competition that begins today and runs through Sunday. For more on the action in carry, let's go to women's tennis analyst Caroline Routh. Caroline? BJ, to think about this season, let's take a rewind to last season. In the ACC Championship, the Tar Heels faced off against a familiar foe, the NC State Wolfpack. The most dangerous team you could ever play is the team that has a chip on their shoulder, the one that has something to prove and nothing to lose. In doubles, Fiona Crawley and Carson Tangelig took to the courts together. Now, NC State's Rancelli, she's a very smart player. So what's she going to do? Well, she's going to play a forehand low at Carson Tangelig's feet, which caused her to do a pop-up shot that leads to Rancelli's backhand drive. Moments like these led to an early doubles point loss for the heels. Now let's turn our attention to singles. Fiona Crawley, the number one ranked player, is a staple in always securing the singles point. But her consistent game was overpowered by NC State's Schneider. The Wolfpack upset the number one seeded Tar Heels, 4-1, to one, and claimed the title. But in almost cinematic fashion, that wouldn't be the last time the two teams played each other. Both traveled down to Florida for the final showdown, the national championship. The doubles point went to the heels, but the clinching match was between Tangelig and Rejecki, who Tangelig lost to in the ACC championship. Let's check it out right here. So as I mentioned, this is Carson Tangelig's moment to seek some revenge. You know, she lost to this player in the ACC championship. So what's Tangelig going to do? Well, she's going to take the opportunity to clinch, securing UNC's first national title. So where does this bring us today? Well, this weekend, UNC will be back at the Cary Tennis Park. Let's hope they can bring the energy of the national championship and not let the Cary curse continue. BJ? Caroline, this isn't a dual match, but it seems like any matchup against NC State can be tough. What do the Heels need to do to get this done and carry this weekend? Well, BJ, the Heels need to approach every match with the gritty, not pretty mindset that Coach Calvis constantly reminds them of. If they fight hit by hit for each point, I have no doubt the carry curse will come to an end. BJ? Thanks, Caroline. You won't see Fiona, Fiona Crawley out on the courts this weekend, but do not worry. She's getting back into her routine at Carolina. Elizabeth Scotty has the story. Fiona Crawley. Fiona Crawley. Fiona Crawley. Getting back to classes isn't something new for Fiona Crawley, a rising senior on the UNC women's tennis team. But after her Cinderella run at the U.S. Open, it feels a little bittersweet. To represent this university and my coaches and my team and be able to carry myself in a way that makes them proud, that's honestly, other than just my love for tennis, that's why I play. Crawley was given a well-deserved wild card by the USTA into the qualifying of the US Open. And to say the least, she made the most of the opportunity. The first one was pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Just getting over that first round hump. <laughs> My favorite match was when I qualified. Um, I feel like the level of tennis, I really, I really found it in some points. And I hit a few shots where I was like, I didn't know I could do that. Looking up and learning and watching all of those women play, I feel like was the biggest thing that I'm going to take away from U.S. Open. Crawley was able to win three matches in the qualifying before falling in the first round of main draw, but she's ready to be back at UNC. That's why at the end of the day I come back. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you make. <laughs> Do it! I love this school. I love this team. I love this place. It's my home, and I would come back every single time. <laughs> and that's what makes this place so special. I'm Elizabeth Scotty, reporting. We're looking forward to seeing Crawley back on the court this upcoming season in Carolina Blue. The Tar Heels went three for four in doubles yesterday at the fall ranked spotlight in Cary. Graduate transfer Abby Forbes and fifth year Annika Yarlagata were 2-0 yesterday, taking down teams from Texas A&M and Arizona State. 
Junior Carson Tango League and sophomore Reese Brantmeyer won their first match against a duo from University of South Carolina, but unfortunately fell to a tandem from Ohio State in their second match. The doubles will continue through the weekend, and the singles portion has begun. We have some results. So Brantmeyer defeated her opponent from Texas in straight sets. Tango League won a hard-fought three-set match against a player from Oklahoma. Yarlagata fell to her opponent from Ohio State, and Abby Forbes is still out there battling on the court. The UNC men's tennis team began competition earlier today at home in the Tom Chuning Fall Invitational. Seniors Logan Zapp and Peter Murphy, along with junior Dennis Paramov and graduate transfer Will Peters, will be competing against players from across the nation, including in-state rivals Duke, NC State, and Wake Forest. The Invitational runs through Sunday. After a shutout ACC opener against number four Louisville, the North Carolina field hockey team is going head-to-head -head against Wake Forest today at 5 p.m. The heels are coming into this match hot following last week's win. Their precise passing, solid defense, and sharp shooting have left the Demon Deacons with their work cut out for them. With midfielder Kirsten Tomasi scoring more than scoring more in the team's first six games than she has in any previous season at UNC, the Heels are looking to maintain this aggression and momentum against an always dangerous Wake Forest. The UNC volleyball team looks to kick off ACC play today with a match against Virginia and then turning to eighth-ranked Pitt on Sunday. The team has a 4-0 record at home and is hoping to continue that streak with these next two home matches. Last year, UNC took the win against Virginia in a tight 3-2 match, but took a hard loss against Pitt. Mabry Schaffmaster was and still is the powerhouse for UNC's offense, having 120 kills so far this season. Maddie May, who just came off her career-high 22 digs versus Santa Clara, the Heels will look to them to get the win in Carmichael this weekend. On Monday, we presented you with two candidates for Sports Extra Play of the Week. And the winner is the 46-yard touchdown pass from Drake May to wide receiver Nate McCollum to give the Heels their first points on the board in Saturday's game against Minnesota. Now, Bella, were you able to be here at this game and see this play? BJ, I'm telling you, the UNC ticket office has something against me because I have not gotten a ticket yet for this season, but that was an insane throw by Drake May. How about you? Absolutely. I couldn't make it either, and I'm really sad that I missed it, but let's hope that we have more play of the week worthy plays this weekend in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Well, that does it for this edition of Sports Extra. We'll be back on Monday for a recap of another exciting weekend in Carolina athletics. <laughs>